What does it take to make a killer Garchomp costume? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Stephen Reich here at GeekCon 2016 with Ross Cunha, who has made an absolutely fantastic uh, mega shiny Garchomp costume. And uh, we have a little bit of it here, but you can see a full picture right now. And uh, Ross, let's let's talk about a few parts of it. Let's start at the beginning. Why did you choose to make a shiny Mega Garchomp in the first place? Well, I was playing Pokemon X and just wandering around Route 13, the, the desert area. I came across a random encounter, and it was like it was a shiny Gibble. Like, oh my goodness, that is the first shiny I've ever encountered in the wild. So I just had to capture it, and I did. And I, I leveled it up into a Garchomp and Mega evolved it and. I had no idea that the Mega Evolution form would look so drastically different from the from the regular version. I'm like, wow, that is beautiful. That is going to be my next cosplay. Absolutely, yeah. No, that's that that is uh, the, is sometimes the inspiration there. All right, well, let's let's just do this. Uh, I guess head to toe. So you've got uh, right here with us. You've got the uh, headpiece. Which you can see there, it has uh, obviously the, the, the face and uh, the teeth and the little side things. So how did you go about making that? What, where did you start and uh, what was the process like? I started off with a uh, bicycle helmet. Uh, I decided I would um, build it up, build up the, pa the basic shape with paper mache and wiring. And then I wanted to experiment with a uh, type of thermal plastic. So I decided to go with Wonderflex. Um, what I did was I basically used uh, cardboard uh, that I got from my work. Like the, the, the fins here are made from cardboard tubes. Uh, so I built up the basic shape, covered it in Wonderflex, and then I, had to, I decided I wanted a, an articulate jaw. So. Oh, it actually moves. That, that is really neat. I built up the jaw using wood and cardboard, uh, made the teeth out of wood, and I, I, put, uh, I put little hooks and, and rubber bands on the inside of it so that the jaw would move when I, when I talk. After that came the painting, and it just, it just came out uh, better than I had ever expected. I mean, I put a lot of time mostly into building the helmet alone uh, compared to the rest of the costume. But we do still want to talk about and let the folks at home know about the rest of the costume. So... After, uh, you know, besides the head, you also had to build, like, a, basically a jumpsuit. Uh, what sort of went into that to, to cover the, you know, the, the torso and legs? Well, I, uh, first came the material. I wanted to do a shiny version, but I, I knew that if I went with anything that was actually shiny in material, it would probably look pretty bad for pictures. So I went with a, a dull satin, and I managed to find just the perfect color at my local fabric store, Started off with the, the, the leggings, uh, and then I built the, uh, the shirt to go with it, and I sewed that together. I left a slot in the opening, or in the back, because I knew that I had to be wearing a dorsal fin as well. So I had to, uh, I had to accommodate for that as well. Yeah, yeah, you you really you got everything in there. Yeah, the so the, the the fins in the back. Well, there's there's a fin and then there's a tail. How did those uh, how did those come together? So first things I had to do is I made the fin out of wood and I took uh, pictures from the from the game, blew it up and uh, made it to made it to uh, scale. So I cut that I cut out the fin and I made myself a harness using a metal plate and um, uh, bolts and and brackets and uh, you actually attach the tail is attached uh, to the fin by a, a wire there is that just to, to keep it from dragging on the floor yes uh, the wire is also a conscious uh, safety choice for other other people that might be near my costume because uh, obviously if they get caught on it it, it could damage their cosplays or anything like that. Fortunately, that's never happened, but uh, yeah, it's, it's for both support and for uh, visibility. You also had to make some claws on your arms for the costume. Is that more wood there? Yes, those are made out of wood, and I, I drilled uh, um, finger holes for them, so I'm basically holding them like this at all times. And uh, the interesting part about that one was making the sleeves that cover up my, my wrists. So I wanted to go for a complete look. Uh, and 
my wrists are completely uh, covered up. I have literally no use of my hands at all while I'm wearing the costume. Yeah, it's, it's obviously not something you want to wear all the time, which is one reason we only bought uh, the headgear down for, uh, for this interview. Uh, how much would you say the costume weighs overall? Uh, let's see. This helmet alone weighs about seven pounds. Um, the tail itself is made from an old tomato planter that I found in my back tool shed, and uh, that's about um, two and a half or so. The dorsal fin, uh, probably another two. Um, all around, I'd say probably about 15 pounds. I mean, the, the sides themselves are, are rather heavy for their size. Yeah, that's always something to consider, but it looks like you, uh, you managed to accomplish uh, you know, getting around at the, at the photo shoot yesterday pretty well. You sort of implied earlier you've made other costumes. Which, which ones have you made? I've never done any other Pokemon costumes before. Um, the ones I've done before this are Bato from Ghost in the Shell and uh, Dust from Dust and Elysian Tail. Uh, I've never actually made a costume of this size and scale before. Absolutely neat. Like I said, super impressive costume when it's all put together. All right. Well, this has been Stephen Reich from GeekCon 2016.